Okay, we're going to get started here with uh, Kansas State coach Jerome Tang. Coach Tang, when you're comfortable, if you can get us started with some general comments about your team. All right. Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. A um, little bit more comfortable than last year, and so uh, excited, uh, happy uh, with the roster that we've assembled, and uh, excited about the opportunity to start playing games. Okay, remember, if you've got a question, uh, raise your hand and we'll have one of our uh, wireless mics get to you. We've got a question here on the front row. Charlie, you want to get? Please remember to give your name and your affiliation. Uh, this is uh, Hence Todd with um, Bowtie Sports. Uh, I want to ask you a question. How do you feel about um, being inside the kingdom uh, with the Chiefs um, banging a drum that day? Uh, a lot of Chiefs fans loved it, and it was a, a popular day for you that day. Um, you know, I had, uh, the, th the Thursday night home game before that, that was my very first NFL game that I had ever been to and in my life. And so and one of my assistants... Bailey told me about the drum, the guy on the drum, and uh, I had no clue. And then, you know, a week later, I get a call to do it, and I thought it was a huge honor um, to do something to bring a fan base together. Um, uh, I have since learned that there are some people that may not have been as excited about that, and um, sometimes we do things for one reason, and it can be construed as something else. So it was never meant to offend anyone, but to bring a fan base together. And I considered it an honor for the reason why they asked me. And um, moving forward, I, I think I'll educate myself a little bit more on everything before making certain decisions. Let's go to Blair here in, in the middle. Uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. Coach, you, you said you were more comfortable this year than you were a year ago at this event. How about get into that a little bit, and why are you more comfortable? Well, you, you kind of know what to expect. Like last year was my very first time, and I was the very first person up here and had no clue, you know, like, okay, let's. And I, I never ever watched Big 12 Media Day when Scott was up here. I, I was at the house working, and so, you know, it never was something that I paid attention to. So, you know, now I kind of have an idea what to expect, the going around the different groups and and so just feel a little bit more comfortable coach you got a coach question over here to your left yes Nathan Giesel the Avalanche Journal what were some of the smaller things that allowed you guys to be so successful in your first year that maybe other coaches could kind of replicate and have their own success like that um, man if I could uh, tell you and replicating it would give you those results then like and I, I'd be a incredibly rich man, you know, <laughs> just to, it's I, I tell you this. I, I believe that we found winners. We had 10 state championships on our team last year um, and guy, guys who had won. They'd won the last game in their career at some point in time. And then I have a staff that loves me and like really loves the guys. And they were willing to be honest with me when I wasn't we weren't going in the right direction or if something needed to be changed. And uh, when you get uh, people who are transparent with each other, and operate out of motive of love, uh, you can accomplish anything. Charlie, you can go back to Blair, please. Coach, I just wanted to ask about your recent Colorado trip, how that came about, and what you got out of that. <laughs> um, well, I've known Ray Forsett, who's Dion's chief of staff for a very long time, and uh, I knew him as a high school coach. We recruited one of his players, Isaiah Austin, and uh, played for us at Baylor, and so I have a long relationship with him, and his dad, Pops, and Justin, his brother, and uh, Ray and Dion have worked together for years, and um, then uh, I learned about Constance, um, who's, who runs Smack, and uh, I, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to, to expand uh, what I was doing because you know, there's a fine line between going from good to great, and I thought we were good, and but I want to be great, 
and I want to be around great people. And uh, Ray opened the opportunity for me to be able to meet with uh, Dion and find out roster management, staff management, things like that from him. And then uh, with Constance about how to take our brand, the K-State brand, and uh, not just make it national because it already is, but make it global. And because uh, I believe that I'm in the best place in the world and we can win national championships and compete for national championships every year. And so, you know, I want to do my part to put us in that position. Okay, we've got two questions here in the middle there. First one on the third row. Yeah, Coach, Kevin Sweeney for Sports Illustrated. Um, let's talk about branding. Um, you guys have been probably one of the more open programs in terms of social media and putting things out there. I'm curious, what inspired that when you, when you took the job and um, how comfortable you've gotten being so open with the entire world about your program? Um, okay, well, Jareem Dowling on my staff, um, he is a unique individual. There might only be three other people in America that can do what he does. And um, his ability to tell a story through social media and um, let people feel how real we are, um, that, that's really special. I wanted him to be able to be himself. Uh, the other thing is I just believe that um, when, when you share, right, you help other people get better and you get blessed for the sharing. And so, um, you know, I, I know uh, sometimes there's certain people think they have secrets and they want to keep them, but I mean, there really aren't no secrets. We're just replicating what other people have done in, in, and putting our own personality on it. And nobody can duplicate what we do because they don't have our personalities and nor our love, nor our care, nor our passion. And I, I think um, I think our recruits out there are seeing that, and they want to be a part of it. Let's go to the middle here on the front row, uh, four, fourth row. I'm sorry. Hey, Coach Isaac Trotter with 24/7. How do your conversations in the transfer portal change when you kind of have the proof of concept that you guys were able to show last year, and then kind of parlaying that into the portal this cycle? Uh, yeah, last year we recruited 75 guys. We did 75 zooms. Uh, with video and everything to sign 11. Um, so 61 guys told us no. And, um, you know, during the NCAA tournament, I got a lot of text messages from 61 guys saying, you know, coach, I messed up or congratulations. And so my message to the new guys is like, you can either send me a congratulatory text or you can enjoy it with me. And um, so I'm thankful for the ones who have chose to enjoy it with us. Okay, we've got time for two more questions. Uh, first one will be over here to uh, Coach's left. Sin Manhattan Mercury. Oh, there we go. Timmy over Sin Manhattan Mercury. Um, what's kind of the biggest impact that, that Tyler Perry has made since he got on campus? <laughs> uh, he smiles every day, and uh, people just love being around him. And uh, he may be the best shooter in America. And so that is the basketball side of things. Uh, but just the personality and how he brings people together is really special. Okay, we got one on the TV deck. Coach, back here. How good is this league going to be, and do you have any sense of what kind of league it's going to be with this new schedule and everything? Yeah, well, we have been the best basketball league in the country for a while now, and we will continue to be the elite basketball league in America. And uh, what's exciting is that every kid out there wants to compete against the best and so they're going to want to come playing the big 12 we have the best coaches the best environments and you have the best players and uh, the results speak for themselves and so uh, that is super exciting moving forward excited about the new teams that are coming in and uh, I mean the great venues we're going to get to play in and uh, I'm excited to be about being part of growth and uh, and when you can walk around and know that, that, that you are the very best at what you do, uh, it, it just gives you extra confidence. We do have time for one more question, if anyone is interested. Back here over to your left, Coach. Brendan Dorzinski, WIBW Radio in Topeka. Keeping in mind the roster churn you guys have this year, the turnover, the new additions, what do you foresee Naquan Tomlin's role being and what more are you hoping to see from him in year two at the program? Uh, well, last year uh, when Quan played 30 or more minutes in a game, uh, we only lost one game, and that was the last one. Um, so 
him staying out of foul trouble is what I hope so that we can keep him on the floor for 30 minutes. And if he's out there and playing with energy, he's going to be super productive. And uh, he had a great summer, and so his confidence level uh, should be very high. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you.